All right. Praise the Lord. Good evening. Good evening, seekers. God bless you. We are here this evening. It's been a long time since I left you. <laughs> Arrived to step two. <laughs> ah, I'm Pastor Jillian Thomas. And welcome to the Seek. It's I said was it Saturday? No, Saturday I had to cancel because I had no voice and I needed to take a day of rest. And so I'm so grateful that I'm getting it back. Um, I'm getting it back. And so I'm joined tonight. It's gonna be a little different. But we're gonna, and we're not gonna be long. I told Minister Stephanie, I'm like, we're gonna just try to quit it, like around five past ten, five past ten. So if y'all are coming on, come on, put your comments in. Let us know that you're here. You know we love you all. You know we we um we've seen the seekers coming. Um, we know that this September we're gonna be two years. Hello, Prophetess Kamisa, how you doing? Blessings, blessings. Good to see you. Good to see you. Amen. That's right. Let us know that you're here. Go ahead and share. We're going to be talking tonight. Listen, y'all already got the lesson plan for tonight. It's what I put on my, my, my page today. And I shared it to the seek page and the 30 day seek page as well about soul healing, soul healing. I realize this is a journey. You all it's a journey. And so many of us are seeking to be delivered from some things that ain't going to happen just like that. You know, it's not magic. I always say it's not magic right? The Holy Ghost is going to work. But my God, you are here as a human being. That means that there's process. That's this process. Minister, Prophetess, Elder, Stephanie, how are you doing this evening? <laughs> right. All these titles, Lilac, Stephanie. I'm so good. So glad to see you. So glad to hear your voice. Good to Look, be we are here. praying for our pastor. We're like, what's going on? Nah, we sending the enemy to flight. Nah, you can't have her. You know what I mean? But let's just pray, y'all. Pray. You need to rest too. So yeah, at times when we don't take our own rest, yeah, our bodies are like, hey, girl, you got to take rest. So don't I don't like I you. My body was like, I don't like you. I'm not mm -hmm. listening. And I, I'll tell you, you know, it started off with like, I, what I thought was an allergy to cats. Yeah. Cat lovers, yeah. I ain't hating on you. Your cats don't like me. Trust me. They like me, but what's on their body don't like me. And my body don't like them. And so I was watching my grandbaby, Ara, as KJ was taken back to Atlanta. And they have two cats. And so it started off for me with like an irritation in my eye. And I had to leave the house because my eye got really like bubbling up like crazy. So um, I came home and I spent home. <clears throat> And, you know, I think it was, I had to travel, I had to speak. And I just started feeling some nasal backdrop situations and, you know, all right. <laughs> and then it's just like, okay, two and a half weeks later, I'm in, on inhalers, I'm on mucinex, I'm on prayer and liquids and soup and da, 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 da. I'm on like homebound, I'm taking COVID tests. I'm like, well, Jesus. And so we was COVID negative, they're COVID negative. So, you know, you're careful because you want to go out. But then you realize that you're okay by now I should be catching my healing. And um, and then I'm just like, okay, my voice is not here, and I'm having my coffee fits, and it was just almost seemed like it was like a irritation that went to allergies, that went to a cold, that went to it got exacerbated to you know, bronchitis and da, 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 and so forth. And so, you know, we're just grateful to be back. I, I had a moment there because you know, I don't think I've ever been this out that long in my life. And so I realized, I'm like, well, I just hit 51. Like, what's going on? Oh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Already then. Like, oh, no. oh. Just had a birthday. What's wrong with you, buddy? Get, get your life together. And so you decide, it's like, is it okay? enough is enough. All right. I, yeah, I can't have it no more. That's it. I'm like, sneakers, let's get to moving. Let's get this blood, this blood pumping. I actually went to the grocery and I cooked. <laughs> I cooked. I was so proud of myself. And I haven't eaten out for about 10 days. That's going to be over by Thursday. <laughs> I was about to say, you should be looking slim and trim. Okay? Uh, I got like, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm like, okay, my fat is getting muscles, so that's okay. <laughs> and so with all of that, all of that to say, I, I'm grateful for the prayers of the saints. I'm grateful. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you, prophet. Uh, Cheryl Mahoney, I miss you, girl. I miss you like I would miss lemon cake. Okay, that's a lot of missing going on. I want y'all to pray, pray for Sister Benita, Prophet Benita. Y'all know she's had her surgery um, and she's continuing to push and to press. Pray for Mother Mary Curry. I want you to pray for C.D. Thompson. She's right now in the emergency room 
um, because she's been having issues like this for like almost three weeks yeah. where it's been the cough that won't go away, right? So we know that it's a trail. And there she is. Hello, darling. I just mentioned you. We're praying for you. She's like, that's it. And she told me, sent me a text. She said, no, the devil wants my voice. And I told you, I was in, listen, I'm here washing dishes, being real domesticated, uh, messing up my house to make it clean. It's just like, you know, just going from room to room, just destroying stuff, trying to say, I need a new change, a season, blah, blah, blah. And it just came to me. I'm like, now, nah, wait a second. I need my voice. It's one thing I need. I need my voice. And I'm like, enough. You just come to the moment where it's just like, and it's like, okay, Jillian, what are you declaring? I'm declaring this is over. Like I'm like, I have no more. I have I understand rest. I'm not saying to be fooled. I understand rest and being tired. I understand, you know, needing to your body needs to be rejuvenated. I, I understand all of that. I really do. And, and drinking your fluids and taking your vitamins and being healthy and eating well and, and being clear in your emotions, all those things. We're gonna talk about some soul healing tonight. Those importance. But I also understand how the enemy will jump in and put him insert himself like a rude child in an adult conversation. Come on. That needs to be put in his place. Like you've spoken enough. You said enough and enough is enough. And so when I, I believe that when I, I, I got to the rest part and passed to get some rest. Yes. I love you all. And I thank you. And I'll pray. And I, I receive the prayers of the saints. Like I'm, when they're praying 5 a.m. in the morning, I'm, I'm receiving the prayers of the saints and just there in the presence of the Lord while they're doing the prayers. Amen. Because it's not just about me. It's about us as a body. But when you decide for yourself enough is enough, something begins to shift. My God. Right? And so that other thing comes out of you. It's like, oh, no, no, no. We're going to walk. We're going to get this blood moving, get this body moving. We're going to get ourselves clear. And we're going to start le legislating like, okay, we got rest. Okay. We lay down. We're doing well. We're recuperating now. This word's gonna about to be manifest because the enemy will not take the power of my voice, uh, acoustic intelligence. Right? There's something about being able to legislate. When the Lord spoke to Ezekiel, He says, "Can these bones live?" He says, "And I spoke as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. I opened my mouth and I decreed the declarations of the heavens within the earth realm. I shift when I said what I needed to say." And so whatever, whatever you're dealing with, I'm here to still remind you that the power of the word in your mouth is what's going to be able to break and shift an atmosphere. Oh and so I decided tonight that I don't care if my voice is going to go at the end, that we're going to get on here. Patricia, I miss you. I love you so much. I need some stuff dates. <laughs> Chef Patricia, we love you. <clears throat> so glad that you're on tonight. Janice Murphy, y'all pray for her. Janice had COVID, y'all. Janice is a past that tested positive for COVID, but she's doing well. Round two, and she's coming through like a trooper. She's like, I feel great today. So, um, you know, I am pro-vaccination. Yes, I am. And uh, I'll talk about that later. Um, you know, a lot of people are not getting, why do we have polio right now? I'm on my bandwagon. Here we go. I'm on, I just got my, my so box. Box. I just got my pill box. Why do we have polio that was eradicated? Okay. Now you're going to be looking for measles and mumps and all the things that have been eradicated on uh, making his comeback. It's going to make his comeback because some of us are saying, I'm, I'm not just not going to, not, I'm not, and I know it's like overload on vaccine, vaccine, more stuff in your body, but it's, it's just the vaccination is just one portion, right? Because if you're vaccinated and you're not living healthy, and if you're putting a lot of junk in your body, and if you're stressed, you see what I'm saying? You're, you're still, you're almost beating your immunity system down. So we, we need to look at this thing in a holistic way. Okay. Um, but there's a way that we have to treat our bodies. And I am a proponent of medicine. Medicine is a mercy gift from God. Medicine is a mercy gift from God. Whether that medicine is your herbs, your spices, whether it's medications your doctor gives you to help to balance something that's out of out of order. And yes, there's yin and yang. And yes, there's, there's this at this adverse effect. Yes. But I understand that without medicine, a lot of our lives would have been cut short a long time ago. Okay. And somebody... Somebody got a, a wisdom. They call it a wisdom from the heavenlies to know how to help extend life and to help improve our life. And so um, God bless you, Sister Lucy. Congratulations. She's about to be married. I'm so happy for her. Um, Y'all take care of your body. Speak in tongues all you want to. Don't take care of this body. We will be crying and rolling you out <clears throat> down the aisles, okay? And not in a wheelchair, in a casket. That We all got to go, but some of us are going a lot sooner than we need to, all right? So take care of your body. Take care of your body. Um, 
Prophet is Stephanie. You want to talk about our seek coming up, seek 22. I think about eight days. Yes. It, you know, we're almost right there. I mean, and this in everything we've been doing, we're conditioning ourselves for the consecration, right? We're preparing, we're getting our minds right. You don't start consecration on the day of September 1st. You start conditioning your body, your mind, your spirit now that we get into the habit of giving up our meals now so that when we start on September 1st, we're just flowing right into it. September 1st, if we're starting then, we're too late. We're behind the eight ball. Come on. Okay? We're behind. Someone said about making excuses today. Who was that? <laughs> <laughs> we're behind the eight ball. No, but in all seriousness, it is good to condition our bodies now right. to get our minds and hearts prepared to consecrate. So it's the preparation before consecration. So we don't slip up. We don't fall. We're already getting ourselves in the habit of it. So if you're new to the SEEK, hey, y'all, welcome, welcome, welcome. And to welcome. those who've been there, you know, since September 2020, no, ain't nothing changed, okay? We're doing the same protocol. protocol. It is proven to work. Yes. We've seen the blessing, and we have felt the closeness and connection to God. Undeniable. Amen. Undeniable. Amen. We've seen what happened. So this is the protocol, and we'll make sure this is posted in our groups, too. Right. We fast at least one meal a day. From one that's meal. breakfast, that's lunch, or that's dinner. One six-hour period, roughly. One, one six-hour period, okay? Every day. Every, every day, day for the 30 days. The 30 days of September. It is September. Seek for us. It's our reset. Yeah. Now, funny story. Uh, Prophet Benita, when we first started, <laughs> she was fasting two meals and only eating one. And I know, I'm like, ooh, you know, and there was some weakness in the body, okay? And then when things got corrected, her strength yet returned. So we thank and praise God. Right. Um, and so you pray for at least one hour a day. Now, right. um, you can do any combination of that, right? That's, that's 15 minutes four times. That's 30 minutes twice, right? You can break that down. But we are intentionally praying for one hour a day. Definitely. And I want to say, if that's something you already do, push yourself, right? Yeah, this right. is a stretching. This is a right. challenge. This is a pushing. Stretch yourself past what you already do. Oh, I already do that. Also, I'm glad you said that. Do something longer and do something better. <laughs> Hold on, let me just add this for our our seekers who pray. We already pray 5 a.m. in the morning. It's about 30 of us who are on the line. So invite somebody to join. Invite somebody to join in the prayer, right? So now your one hour prayer while you're listening, and most of you all, oh, God forgive me, most, most are not praying on the 5 a.m. prayer. All right, so that's not your hour. So unless you're going to actually engage in praying while the individuals are praying, you're not praying. Don't rob yourself. If we follow the protocol, we're going to get the benefits of the protocol, oh, right? God. We're fasting from one meal a day, right? So that's one six-hour period, all right? And you don't know how Abba worked with us, and that's that's for the 30 days, but that may go into a 48 hours of fasting, or he may call us for 24 hours of fasting throughout September and, and, and any day. That may happen on the weekend. We may, you know, we're, we're going to be meeting every night online at 9. All right, so we'll have various speakers, various things happening, but we're, we, this is what we do. We're, this is what the seekers do. This is how we were built. We were built on September 30, 30 days of seeking God for the encounter, My for God. the encounter with God. Our, our subject for, or our title, our theme for this September is I'm covered. I'm covered. Go ahead and talk about the protocol. I'm going to come back and talk about it. My, my. I would say you can go ahead with I'm covered because I'm ready to just lay back right there. I'm covered. That means everything. But anywho, yeah. so we talked about we fast for at least one meal a day. That's a six-hour period. Don't cheat yourself. Don't Do cheat. it. This is a proven protocol that works. My yeah. God, today. This is our bread and butter. This is our spiritual bread and butter. This is all we know. This is our nourishment. This is what we've eaten. And we've seen the benefits of it. So we're praying at least one hour a day. Doesn't right. count at 5 a.m. We're going to push ourselves past our comfortability. Right. Then we read, we meditate, and we study what? Scripture, Scripture, the word of God, for at least one hour a day. Some of us just read, and I'm including myself too. You right. start reading the word, and then your mind gets all over the place. We are intentionally reading, meditating, and studying. So that means we need our journal, right? Right now, if we don't do anything else, we journal. We need our journal. We need to be writing. God is going to be speaking while we're reading, right. meditating, and studying. We don't want to miss anything. Okay. And big thing, invite two people to join. Who is God laying on your heart to say, hey, come join me in this? Right. And then we can't wait to hear the testimonies come on on October 1st of what happened and the rest of the year, what God is going to do because we're covered. Okay. And I already said this write what we're seeing. 
Mm. Once we get closer to God, the veil is lifted, the scales have dropped, the fog has moved away. The Lord is going to give us his eyesight. And so there are things we're going to see. We have to write what we see. We have to write what we see, right? Write what you hear. Our senses become alive. The closer we get to Abba, what do you mean? We start to hear differently, see differently. The closer we get. Yeah. So we stay in his presence. We start to hear things and see things. We don't want to miss those things. So make sure you have your journal, okay? Get in your mind what you want to write on. Get your special pen. Put it in your special place. Don't let your kids get to it. Don't let your dog get to it. Protect this, okay? Protect all this stuff. And then share the journey. That's the biggest thing. We're sharing this journey. What we've seen, heard, what we've experienced, the freedom we're going to experience, what's going to come up out of us so that God can put more in us. That's our protocol. Again, I'm going to share it and make sure that it's in our group so that no one is confused. Save the picture, download it, put it on your phone, put it on your wall, put it somewhere that you can always keep track of what's going on. This is proven to work. This is what we do. This, this is what the teachers do. So that's the protocol. <laughs> Listen, Sister Lula always is looking forward to it. We are, we're excited about it too. I'm excited. I'm listening to Stephanie talk, just talk about protocol. I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting like butterflies in my stomach and my chest is a little, a little tight. I'm like, ah, it's going to be ah, really great. I'm covered. I'm covered. Listen, oh my gosh. Um, I'm in the house, I'm cleaning up. And I think I put a post up and I said, okay, how many of y'all tear up your house before you, <laughs> while you're cleaning? Like just literally, right? I'm, I'm just like, I created a whole whirlwind trying to just like get order. And so it's like, everything comes out. I'm like, oh, like, where'd you go? But then it's like, just one thing here and one thing there. And then I start shoe discovery and I got really excited about that. So I was like, no oh. shoes. <laughs> 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 and then I started packing up bags of clothes and shoes for sister Denise to take and to give away to do whatever a flea market, whatever she does with them, right? So I'm like, and I'm not done. I'm not done. My process takes a lot longer. Um, and then I had to start rebuking myself because I have this thing in my mind. Oh, here comes fast. I'm going to confess to you, okay? Because I hear what the rule. The rule is like, you can't buy nothing unless you give stuff away. But part of the reason why we have to clean up to make room is because we got stuff that we don't have room for. My mind. That's, all, that's already here. So that don't count. So I have to be rebuking myself, trying to justify why I got to have that. I got to have that. And I got to have that. Now I live my life this. So I'm like, I'm, I'm, this is a, I, but the balance, right? There's some things I will not be denied. Unless the Lord said you can't have it. But I'm like, I don't believe that the Lord is one who like, don't do this. Don't do this. You have right. goals. You reach to certain things. You discipline yourself to get to certain things. But some of us live our lives so stringently and um, we don't enjoy life. And I'm I'm just a, so averse to that because the day has enough trouble of its own. Oh, but the joy of the Lord is my strength. And the joy of the Lord is, yes, I am saved. But he said, I gave you all things to enjoy. And you all have to take on joy. You have to let the thing come up out of your spirit. When you think about how much God loves you, when you think about how he's provided for you, how he make ways for you, when he said he will give you the desires of your heart. Oh, yes, my God. And so there's some things that I just know. Uh, you don't hold anything tight. Mother always say, hold all things loosely. So that means that you can't be stingy with your stuff. Come that on. you give to stay to the flow. So if you give, then he said, it shall be given unto you. Uh, there's a flow in the kingdom that we Come have on. to live right now. And I'm not waiting till I get to heaven to experience it. No, that's heaven on earth because the joy of the Lord truly is in your soul and you can have it. You can have it. Matter of fact, it's already been given to you. It's a gift that Abba has given to you. So you have to know already how to tap into that thing. Oh, there's a key he's given you to open the doors and to tap in. So I'm cleaning up. Let me go back to the story. You know, here I go commentating, Stephanie. Commentating. She's commentating her own story. Just want to say that. But go on. <laughs> Not even the word of God. It's her own story. Okay. I'm covered in my story. I'm cleaning up and I'm bending over to pick up stuff because I'm trying to tell you, I'm like, I'm taking, I have shoe boxes, but then I have sure. store boxes and I'm like, um, I don't like store boxes, right? So why I got so many in here? So I, I put shoes and shoe boxes, shoes give away, and I start breaking the, breaking apart all the boxes to put them in the recycle bin. See, there's an order to, you got to do, they got to recycle, got to be responsible for the earth. Um, and I bent over and the Lord just says, I'm covered. I hear it. I'm covered. My mind. And so Abba says to me in my spirit, he said, Julian, you don't know what you look like from on top. And I, and I felt like, oh, like, oh, daddy, 
Like he was on top of me. He said, like he was looking out. He said, like, you don't know what you look like from here. From my angle where I'm looking over you, you don't know what it is. I'm like, no, like daddy, I don't know, right? He's like, you're covered. Like I got you. And so that moved me so deeply because it's like the Lord is just saying, like, regards to where you are, My like God. whatever you're dealing with, like wherever you go, whatever you will face, you're covered because mm -hmm. daddy's watching over you. He's watching over you to protect you. He's watching over you to provide. He's watching over you to keep you. Like you feel like, okay, you can't move and you're and you're limited and you can't do what, what you want to do. Like, I feel so restrained. He says, you're covered. My mind. You're covered. And there was such um, a peace for me uh, just in all of this, like being, I feel like restrained and not being able to move or to talk or to share. And he's like, I got you. And so he was doing something in my soul, just having one of those kisses on the forehead moments. Yeah. Where he says, Julian, I got you. You're covered. Like, don't worry. Like, yeah. I, I hear those thoughts. Remember, I don't also just answer the words that come from your mouth, but I'm the God that answers your thoughts. Sometimes your prayer is a thought. Sometimes you're thinking and it's a, it's a, it's a heart issue of concern like yeah. God. And you don't consider it that you're doubting God. You consider it worry, but Abba sees it. And he's like, I got that. You're covered. You're covered. You're covered. You're covered. Somebody go ahead and put that. Yeah, put it in the chat. I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm covered. Everything about me is covered. So then I was thinking just about today about what covered means, Steph. And so let me just go ahead and just ask the Lord to bless our time together. Oh my God, it's 942. We haven't even talked about. <laughs> now, Pastor, you knew. <laughs> you knew that we were not going to get out of here by 10.05. You knew. But I'm excited. I'm just I, I'm excited. I feel, and I feel the pull. I feel the pull coming from the seekers. I feel it so hard. Then pull Lord, on. bless our time. Bless our time together. Father, bless your word. Bless our fellowship. Lord, bless our desires. Bless our passions. Lord, help us to heal where we're broken. Those fissures that are in our souls. We need the touch of God. We need you to touch us in those places. And Father, sometimes in the back, we can't see, but we feel the hurt. We can't put our hands on that part that's so deep on the inside, but we feel, God, the pain, and we need you to reach down deep inside of us. Uh, go back, God, in the recesses, the cores of our minds, our memories, and those moments where things have been gaping holes, have been caused into secret places. And we ask you to heal us, God, today with your mighty touch. Um, allow us to be able to reflect, Father, but not from a painful place, but from a place of purpose. Allow your hand, God, your hand, your hand of love, mercy, and com compassion to reach us right where we are and bring us, God, into a place of wholeness today. We are open to receive from you as we share God from your word. Bless our gathering in Jesus' mighty name. And we say thank you, Lord, and amen, 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 amen. All right. And so, so we was talking about covered, and this is just for this is just a precursor for September C. Because I looked at the date and I said, My God. We gotta, we gotta get our stuff up and ready to go. Donna, we're so glad to see you. Janice Webster, praying for you. She lost her sister. Please pray for her. Um, we're, we're praying for the seekers. There's so many of you all praying for um, um, uh, Elder uh, Ariska. Amen. Our New Orleans family. There's so many of you all. Oh, Shannon is here. Y'all, you know, Shannon got to come back and sing for the seek. Stop playing with my feelings, Shannon. Amen. We praise God. Listen, we're covered today. Let me just go through. Um, I, when I was looking up the definition, I want to see if I wrote it up. I did. I wrote it up. When it says cover it, think about this, right? It's to put something in front of or on top of, especially for the purpose of protecting or concealing it. So if it's covered, you know, you take, ja, you cover it, right? You're you sometimes were driving with the windows down and you're going through a work area where they're working and you see the dust in the air and you actually wind up the windows, really. It's like, so I'm, I'm sealing myself in for the sake of protecting it, right? This house has a roof or whatever building you may be in right now. And that roof serves as covering to protect all the precious things that are on the inside. I think about a seed, whether it's a walnut or a cashew or pistachio, like whatever seed that you may have, right? 
a mango seed, right? And a, a mango seed, they have the shell, that, that external shell that covers, um, that conceals. But what is it doing? It's protecting the true treasure that's on the inside. Um, and Abba says, I got you covered because I've given inside of you this treasure there in you. But I'm your protection. And I'm, we're going to go so many different areas and places in this because even as I've given you pastors, mm, he says, obey them, um, um, trust them, submit to their authority. Listen here, submit to their authority because they watch over your soul. They got to give an answer for your soul. And so if you're in covenant with a pastor, then you have to know that that pastor truly covers you. Now, I'm not going to go to the bad pastor and the good pastor. So I give you pastors after my own heart. I'm, and we have to learn how to navigate the relationships that we have as adults or as individuals with choices about how we choose to enter into covenant um, so that we can get the maximum because I can halfway cover the glass. So I can halfway cover the glass or I can cover it totally. How you choose to surrender and yield yourself to your covering will determine the level of your protection. Jesus. Can we hear that one more time, please? <laughs> well, how you choose to yield and surrender yourself to submit to your covering will determine your level of protection. Oh my God. Ever ate some, got a nut, you open it up and you can just tell that already something had gotten into that shell, had perforated, right? That created a fissure, a hole, a brokenness in that protective shell for whatever reason, whatever trauma that may have caused that shell to be cracked and then will cause things, parasites, worms, whatever can seep in moths to come on the inside where they should not have access to, but because the trauma created the fissure. The trauma created the fracture. The trauma created the brokenness. And then certain enemy of that seed, that, that potential, that capacity, that, that thing inside of you, that gem, that jewel inside of you, my, your soul, your soul, your soul. I mean, your thoughts, how your thoughts become broken, your, per, your perception, because this certain situation caused it to be a fracture that now allows certain enemies of your peace to sit inside and begin to eat away at you from the core. So the shell is there. And sometimes that shell may come closed back, but the damage has already entered within. Mm -hmm. What God really is trying to get us to get to is that sometimes that shell must be broken. That external covering that you have is fractured and needs to be broken open. Uh, so we need to see what's on the inside. The Lord will allow certain things to happen. So that's trauma on trauma. So that you can receive healing. Sometimes I talk about it as a refracturing of an old, old wound that has healing. But on the inside, the bone has been set incorrectly. And so there's non-union. So the outside, the skin that protects the bone, that protects the flesh, the blood, right? The skin comes back and it does what it does. It does its magic. It heals, right? But on the inside, that bone that, bone that has been fractured, it's non-union. So there's movement on the inside while the outside is looking whole. But I'm looking now and you have something on the inside. It's bruised in there. It's not healing. I can't use that joint anymore. Like I, I don't have flexibility. I don't have the mobility, the range of movement, uh, my ability to grow further and to help myself and to lift and to bend and to do all the things that makes me usable. I can't, I can't, I can't use that body, that joint. I can't think, I can't engage, I can't go back there, I can't, I can't go back there, and I can't operate at the capacity that I should be able to, because on the inside, I'm fragmented, I'm broken. And even within my covering, Abba still says, I still see what's happening on the inside. Because he's the one, he's the one that doesn't just have the power to destroy the body, but he's the one who can heal. And make whole that broken soul. That broken soul. And so I wanted to just talk about just one simple aspect today. Um, Sister Stephanie, there's one simple aspect that we put on our page about the soul. About the soul. I want to hear myself on Facebook. I just want to get to um, what I typed up today. If y'all will allow me to read it. Um, and then we'll just share a little bit about the scriptures, right? Because... This is kind of what you will see probably um, throughout the week. Like we'll do a we'll cover in our September seek. It will be for an entire week. We'll have a writing like this and there'll be prayer points to help you focus your prayers and your attention so that we all could be studying and learning the same thing. Um, 
We don't want to come up with our journals, our seek journals. Uh, we want to be, we don't have our, our merchandise that we could, that could help us in ministry. And this will be the perfect time to do some revisiting again, um, our t-shirts. I know that it wasn't time. Everything happens in its own time. I promise you. I try to order our t-shirts three times. Listen, three times, the entire order. Okay. Talk to the printers, the other printers, the three times major, major, major product. Um, and it got canceled. And so some things you, you don't push a certain thing. Cause some things it's just God saying, hold mm -hmm. on. And so I believe we're going back in time where there's a, a specific design for the seek. We have our seek logo, but this is different. Um, that it's male and female that were beautiful as well as for our t-shirts, as well as for our, our journals. We now have journals because journals are part of our protocol. That just makes sense. <laughs> that just makes sense. And so listen, I'm going to read to you. Um, this is an answer key um, to healing your soul. So many of us need healing in different levels. I'm going to say so many. I'm going to just say to everybody. Everybody needs healing. I need healing. You need healing. We all need healing. People say they don't. And I'm not calling them a lie. I'm just saying everybody is not aware of the level of brokenness. Right. You're not aware of some things we have gone through, but we have it'll, it'll come back in another form. Mm -hmm. uh, I can recognize this individual or this situation because I've been through that. Mm -hmm. but what happens when there is, um, you know, how the coronavirus have morphed and it have come on to another strain. What yeah. happens when your trauma takes on another strain? That's it. <laughs> and, and there's no immunity. There's no there's no vaccine. Right. It started off. It started off as a one strand something, but because it's been proliferating and going around the block and, and taking on strength and mutating and adapting to different scenarios, it yeah. now comes back to you and presents itself in a different form. But at the core, at the core, it stems from that one thing, that one place, that one trauma. I don't know why we deal with trauma so much, but I believe it's, it comes up. I'm seeing it everywhere, in all kinds of spaces and places. I would manifest. This is not about your title. Who cares about your title? The devil don't care about your title. You don't care. Look, make us all look stupid. You know, bishop, apostle, prophet, preacher, teacher. Doesn't matter. Woman of God, man of God. All those acronyms. All those acronyms. When the lights are down, when you're by yourself, or when you're in a crowd that ain't the church crowd, or when you're in the church crowd, or whatever crowd you're in, like, does God know you? Like, what's your relationship like? Because you can't play him. Yeah, well, a lot of us, we play ourselves. You know what I'm saying? You can put on for the people, but who cares? What is the benefit of impressing people when you're living a life that's contrary, that you 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 are convicted by your own life? Like you preach the word of God and you're convicted because you know you ain't living half of nothing that you're preaching. Because the word, the word is going to heal somebody. Because I don't care the devil preach it. I mean, listen, listen, Lucifer himself can come and he didn't tell, he didn't all the way lie to Eve. Right? Yeah, and uh, his revelation was kind of skewed up. He didn't all the way. You know what I mean? And so there's a lot of people who will preach this gospel and people would hear the gospel. And Paul says, Am I going to become a castaway now after I preach this gospel to you? Right? Because I'm not a first partaker, because I can preach it, but I can't live nothing that I'm preaching. So I'm telling you, don't get all moved by titles and don't let nobody know. I'm now a minister, I'm now a pastor. I done went through my holy consecration. And so what? I'm, you know, everybody now sees the fanfare. Now the warfare really begins. Because you're going to be tried. Sure. You're going to be tried for that title that you're carrying. Because every title comes a responsibility. And whether you recognize it or not, that ain't that ain't what they call form and fashion. That ain't no just piece of paper. You got people lay their hands on you. You go through all this regalia. And then going to take on the title. You're going to be found to be a counterfeit. Or you're going to be tried to become the real deal. Jesus. And that's for man of God. That's for Christian. That's for believer. Yeah? What do you believe? Let me see what you believe right now. Or are you compromising this gospel to get along with people because you want them to like you more than you want God to honor himself inside of you? Beware. Beware. Good evening, queen. Good to see you. Let me read. Let me read. I get excited. See, it's you. It's you. It's you on the screen right now. Me? Me? Oh my God, take the blame for this. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay? I'll take it. Somebody take the blame for this. We just missed you and we're pulling. And <laughs> I missed y'all too. Can you tell? Maddie Morrissey, good to see you. Bridget O'Brien, I love you. God bless your name, Michelle. 
Good to see you all. I love you all dearly, dearly, dearly. Listen here, answer keys to healing your soul. And we all need our soul to be healed. Oh my God, heal me, Lord, from the inside out, from the inside out. Let me get back to Facebook here. Do not compare yourself to others. You do it whether you know it or not. Do not compare yourself to others. We tend to be hypercritical of ourselves subconsciously. And we e and even when we are hypercritical of others, it often stems from a deep fissure in our souls caused from wounds of long ago. And that's my stop, my Sila moment for a second. So we're always comparing. Whether well, you say, okay, oh, that dress looked good on you, right? And it's that thought's like, oh, I could never wear that. Or why is she wearing that? Like, is she like, oh my God. Like, okay, she ain't she too big to be wearing that? Well, she know that stuff don't fit her correctly, right? Because in your mind, you have body image issue and you're projecting your judgment against her. So your judgment is now judging her because of your insecurities within yourself. So we have to learn how to stop the comparison. We have to stop to look, look being so external. A lot of the things, okay, I can't get on here unless I look right. Can't get on here, you know, I can't get on. I gotta put my whole face on, you know what I'm saying? Because when you, you see so many different memes, people, men would be like, okay, before before you actually ask her to marry her, go swimming first. Take her to the water. <laughs> <laughs> but honey, when these, these face get beat, baby, you can go to you go in the ocean and this she gonna come out looking just like she is because this stuff is waterproof huh? until you get that uh, that that microcellular cleaner uh, that face will stay on for days <laughs> and still not know what she looked like okay so many of us compare ourselves to others we compare ourselves to others huh? instead of just being happy with who we are. So many of us want to lose weight. I, yeah, I do. I feel like I'm the biggest I've ever been in my life, right? And I want to lose weight because I want to look good in my clothes for me. Like literally, I want to feel good about what I have. But if people never say, that's why I intentionally wear clothes that are sometimes very loose fitting because it has to make me feel good about me, yeah. right? And body con. I don't need people. This is Jillian. This is not a law, right? But I don't need people looking at my body. I don't need the attention. Now for my sisters, let me help y'all here, All right? You wear certain clothing that 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 people will look at and you draw from them passion and desire and lust. Lust is a spirit, right? Lust is a spirit. Someone could look at you and they could admire you. But when somebody look at you and desire you, now the Bible already said they're already sinning in their heart. They've okay. already sinned because they looked at you and from their look, what they saw, it provoked in them mm, that desire to bed you, to have you, to want you. Yeah, look good. Look good. I'm not saying I look good. But you know, and I've said this so many times, you know what you feel like when you are sexy. And that sexiness have its place. But it should not be something that you try to do every day. Because sexiness comes with a spirit. Oh my God. And the spirit of love follows sexiness. So now when you become one that people continue to look at and to yearn and desire, something is coming to you. Something is creeping up your back. Something is tapping on you. I'm not saying that you're being an intentional, hear me, hear me, I love you all. I'm not saying that you're being an in intentional seductress, but it's very easy for us particularly in our Western culture, to take on a seductive nature. You know what it feels like when it comes on you. I'm going to tell you, because somebody need to say, you look good, but baby, if, if you're feeling a little too sexy, pull back a little bit. Put on something a little different. Tone down the lip color. Whatever it is. Well, girl, I look good in this mirror. Now, what are you, who are you, who you talking to? You look good. Where's that? What's that feeling coming from? Like you got, you got, you got. This is the soul work, y'all. I'm sorry. I don't care if they ain't gonna tell y'all this. This is the soul work because when you feel it, it's a spirit. It's a spirit, and when you walk by, others will feel it because they they reach out to others, right? And you're pulling this thing towards yourself. And next thing you know, you're a walking horny pot. You're on fire, twenty four seven. 
what's on me, what's happening, like what's going on. And you got to deal with that spirit that comes to take your attention. So before you know, you can't even rest because you are on fire. And so you're dealing with soul issues, body issues, and spirit issues all within you, all within you. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. I'm covered. I'm covered because some things I've got to protect that seed. Jesus. <laughs> Some things he got to say, yo, let me help my child. Let me help my son. Let me help my son. Listen, help us, Holy Ghost. Because yes, we need to do, we need, I, I went to some certain cultures that I talked to one of my friends about it. He said, American culture is different. Western culture is different. You go to certain cultures and you'll see a husband and a wife. And based on my westernized mindset, I can't see how they're a couple. Because the match don't look. But remember, our lenses are skewed based on where we are. We have been indoctrinated in this culture, in the society. It used to be people like, oh, how, how are they together? Uh, because they got something deeper than what that's just what's physical, right? And sometimes even what's physical to you, that's not that culture doesn't even approach that that way. They don't look like uh, the body that way. Just, they don't, they just, we're just different. So you walk by guys, you just look at, I like the people watch. I know we on here, listen here. Right, the people, people watch. And you just watch a guy and he's trying, he's trying, he's trying to get out. He get out to keep looking back, right? It's like he's gonna try and then uh, he's gonna go back there. Like, what is it about what is it about the glutamus maximus that is so attractive, particularly to a lot of males and males in our Western culture, right? And so women are going on the table to get these butt lifts and are dying, dying, dying because you don't understand truly who you are. I'm talking about covering tonight. You don't understand that you are more than your body. You don't understand how to value yourself. And so what you project is that insecurity. So they don't like me, honey. You don't have to like me because the love that God gave me for myself is, is, is more than enough. And so it's wonderful to be liked, to be appreciated, but that thing has got to be balanced because it would take you over. And so you're looking like, well, no one's looking at me. No one's calling my name. You know, I'm not, no, I'm not attracted to people. I'm like, are you attracted to yourself? Or do you love you? Because when you love yourself, that's a spirit. And that's attractive. When you have confidence in who God has made you to be. My God, you walk in the room, honey. I don't need Mac or Clinique to do me, to step me off. And Fenty can listen. Listen, she need to hire me to wear her makeup because the power that I carry here is going to gravitate to me. You'll get by when I put your product on because it's not your product. It's me. It's me in my relationship with my father. It's me understanding how much daddy loves me. And when I know that thing, oh my God, oh, I may be going through, honey, I may be crying for a minute, but these tears can't last too long because my daddy loves his child. And when you my know God. this, what I'm trying to tell you, when you know it, when you know it for a fact, you can't stay down too long, baby. That's not the way it's going to work. It's not the way to work. So you don't need to compare yourself to anybody. And being hypercritical of somebody else, you got to stop and point for a second. Why are you so hypercritical? Because it's self-righteousness. You're not the Holy Ghost. You're not the Holy Ghost police. You're not the Holy Ghost police. Okay? Don't do this. Don't do that. Just, he said, that's, he said, with loving kindness, I've drawn you. Okay? So stop with all the hypercriticism already. Right? Because what you're is, is you're feeling a lack within your own self and you're projecting that on somebody else and then you're spiritualizing it and you're weaponizing your spirituality. So now you're a weapon of mass destruction and not of love. My so God, healing somebody, you're hurting them with your self righteousness. Oh, God, help us today. I'm just saying, somebody say, I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm covered. Stephanie, I need you to talk because I know you got something to say. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, not much because I'm just like, man, you know, when you start looking at a covering, right, it can mean everything. I mean, it could, it could mean a tent, it could mean, you know, covering you from the harsh nature or a natural disaster when you're covered and then when you spoke about being partially covered and then you only get partial protection right and so i know what the lord has been showing me that only those who are hidden 100 percent in him right i pray this on tuesday that we hide ourselves fully in him that's who gets the benefit should mm. we step or have one foot or one arm out we can't even we can't even risk it in this season to have our arm hurt to have one finger lost, we have to be completely ready to be used in any capacity, right? Come on. So when we're covered, we're committed. Yes. We're, we're committed to the covering, right? So we're committed to God. 
Hmm. And should we say, no, I don't want this covering anymore, then we are open and susceptible to anything. Got right? We are, we are open and we are, we are offering an invitation. We are writing an invitation out so pretty and so nice to the enemy. We're giving him legal access. You've stepped outside of the covering. Right. Right. I, now I have legal access to do whatever I want. Now you're saying something there, sister. No, you're giving him legal access. Wait a minute. Legal. Because if you're outside the parameters of protection, then you're entering into another territory. You're entering into another territory because this is all about legalities. Like, like from the very beginning, God issues his law. That's why I said, okay, now how can a loving God, how can a loving God send people to, that he created to hell? Because he honors his word and he respects your choices. That's how it happens. He's going to honor his word and he's going to respect your choices. Because when he says don't do it, he means it. When he said this is the consequence, he's going to do it. But he's not going to force you to do what he says to do. He's going to honor your choice. And then based on what he said, that's how people end up going to hell. So he doesn't send you there. You make a choice to whether you obey him or not obey him. And so that's the same thing about operating within covering. Being covered, being protected, right? Staying on the, mm, the mighty hand of God. My mind. Mighty hand for this legislative ability, his authority, right? You have the gavel, right? God is a loving God. Yeah, but he's an angry God. He's a jealous God. He's a gruesome God. Oh, yes, he is. He's fearsome, right? He's God. He's God. And so when he's, oh, he's so loving. Okay, I know I'm, you know, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm definitely a Korean pop culture type of person, right? Because, you know, I love my Korean movies. Okay. But uh, everything is, he's not always swoon worthy. No, he's gruesome. He's a gruesome God. He's the God that 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 will cause fear to have fear, right? Beyond that, right? He's the God that by by thought everything will be annihilated, and it's not just so he blows it away. No, when God comes, he, he causes the earth to shake and to tremble, right? And that's just the earth, it's just one speck on all of creation, the earth where we live, right? Yet he puts his great big self in us, around us, and through us. So. You can choose to stay under the mighty hand of God where there's protection or that you can leave from the auspices of his protection and then you deal with the outside consequences. And how do you stay covered? By it in the word. Yeah. It's in the word. The only protection we have is the word of God. That's the, word, the strong tower. My hiding place. Refuge. My, my, my shield. My buckler. My rampart, the word of God is what covers you. So the legality is, okay, uh, how do you testify what you say? What has been spoken? You ought to be my witnesses of me. Well, I call you call a witness uh, to, to speak on behalf of a situation or an individual for their character reference, right? You, you, you call a witness because they were there and they saw the events as it was going down and they have history here and they have something that they have to say on behalf of the matter. And we are to be his witnesses. I'm talking about the word. I'm talking about covering. And so he speaks his word. So he legislates it. And so then he says, come and reason with me. Oh, come on. Bring, bring, bring your cause. This is legal the legalities here. And because since I'm God, and I, I honor my word, then you can hold me because I allow myself to be refined or restricted within the parameters of what I have spoken. It's legality. I'm talking about covering. Come on. So by, my, by, by the legalities of my word, what I have spoken, what I have legislated, I bind myself to my word. So now you have the ability to come and to have a discourse with me based on what I have spoken. And when I've spoken that, that I back up. And so that's why Moses is able to say, now God, you're great God. Now I know these children done sin. They done did this mess. They done broke your laws. But now how you going to look when you already made a promise to rescue them out of Egypt and to bring them out of the wilderness? Now what everybody else going to say about our God, the great God? Now think about that. Think about your character. You can't do that. You can't destroy them for your namesake. He's like, I will wipe them out and raise me up another. He's like, but come on now. But you already said that this was your chosen seed. You already called them. 
This is for your people. Now you're saying that my people, because they disobeyed you, like, now let's have a conversation about this. And God repented. Why? Because God is going to back up his word. Apostle with faith, August, bless you. Bless you, woman of God. So glad that you're here. God's going to back up his word. He's going to honor his word. And then you can hold them to his word. That's why we got to pray the word. What God, and, I mean, you can't get around it. I, just, I don't care. No, me, no message. You, you can preach about prosperity. You got to come by the word. You can preach about salvation. You got to have the word. You can talk about birth. You got to have the word. You can talk about death. You got to have the word. You talk about building. Building. You got to have the word, right? Or let, the, or let the Lord build the house. The laborers are laboring in vain. Come mm -hmm. on, right? You can talk about finance. You got to talk about the word. You know, my family relationships, you got to talk about the word. Everything. Why? Because by the power of his word, he created all things. And then he sustains everything by the power of his word. That's why I know we commentate to me. So we commentate. We try and get out of here. <laughs> we pray the word. We speak the word. We engage the word. We testify the word and to what you said, Lilac. It's about, right? It's the legalities of the matter. That his blood speaks. Why would his blood have to speak? His blood speaks upon the altar. Because that's where he broke the deal of redemption. Oh legalities again. I plead the blood. Why would you plead the blood? I plead the fifth, right? I plead the fifth. I choose not to incriminate myself by opening my mouth and speaking something that you can use against me. Ah, they call silly my Come on. I plead the fifth. Huh? Either, no, 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 ain't the time to be quiet. Open your mouth and testify. Say what I say. I back my word up every time. Cover it. Cover it. Cover it. Cover it. It's about legalities. We're going back to what we started talking about. Healing from your soul. Huh? The Lord wants your soul to be healed. He wants your soul to be covered. These experiences that he has, he wants to have right perspective. I can talk about divorce because it's what I've been through. I love my ex-husband. I don't hate him. I can't afford to hate him. Because if I hate him now, now that's going to stop my prayers from getting answered. Ooh. See, God ain't got nothing to do with that. That's me. That's me. Some people have let me down, totally let me down. And if I thought about it, I had one person call and said, we'll talk soon about it. I'm just like, well, it's about four or five years too late. But I got to still check that thing in my spirit to make mm. sure that I don't have a dam that's causing up there to be a block for my prayers being answered. Father, Father. So I have to be ready to always uh, make peace. Why? Because the word says, to pursue peace with all men as much that lies within you. So if they're making an honest effort to ask forgiveness or to repent, it doesn't mean that we go back and pick up where we left off. It means that I'm choosing not to allow there to be a broken place in me when it comes to you and your offense that you caused me. I'm choosing now not to allow the offense that you caused me to be held against you. I'm choosing to release you from that thing that pain, that judgment that I think you deserve based on how you handle me. I am now taking away from my heart, me. I'm taking it away from me because you're doing what you're doing. It's how I allow it to affect me that I allow my shell to be open and I allow offense to come in and to cause my seed to be bitter. So now when you're coming back to me, for reconciliation, or you're coming back to me to repent, or you're coming back to ask forgiveness. I didn't forget what you did, but I hold no ill will against no you. Ill will. No Ill will. And I may still look at you and I may still miss what we had. Because listen here, a broken bone is a broken bone. You're not gonna break a leg and go get up in the morning and go skiing. Uh-uh, that ain't how that works. I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, I thank you for your words that now comes. But the word that breaks, my God, is sometimes sharper than the word that heals. Yeah. Because when you use the words to hurt or your your, your affection or your, your actions cause it to be a broken trauma in a relationship, the thing that is broken is not just a body, it's trust. It's trust. And when trust is broken, I'm not wired. None of us are wired to just trust like that. Trust that has to be earned. 
And when you honestly give it up front, because I say you start off with 100%, everybody starts off with 100% in the relationship because one, I don't know you, you don't know me. So on the, the initial meeting, I'm talking about soul hurts. This is how we get hurt, okay? This is how we allow, we got to get free from certain things. We're talking about covered. We're getting ready to go to the seek. We got to get all this stuff out on the table, okay? Oh. So, when, so when you come and, and we have this relationship and now trust is broken, I'm not wired. I'm not a fool. <laughs> I know Abba built you with self-preservation. He gave you instinctively a survival skill. And if I know you're a snake, do you think I'm coming to pet you? No, I'm not. And if you change your stripes, or if, uh, let's, let's move away from the snake because the snake is a snake, right? If you hurt me, if, you're a, if you've lied to the point where I've been betrayed and hurt by you, you've come, you've confessed. You said you're sorry, okay? You've you've lied. Not not okay. What does my lie on you, okay? But this my lie on you is like, okay, that's a lie, whatever. What's my lie on you? Then it cost you your job, it may have got you arrested, you know what I'm saying? And then you lost your license, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, when you, your your sons go out and you know he was on the basketball team, and then she said he raped her, and um, then it really didn't happen, but then now he lost all his scholarships, and then, uh, and then she comes back three, four, five years after he's been in jail, and he's been going through all things that jail would bring to him. And she said, well, I'm, I'm so sorry. I forgive you. <laughs> does that stop that four or five years that I've lost? No. Does that, does that erase the person that I have now become because of all the subsequent actions from your, from your initial action? Does that erase the, so I just forget, I forget everything that has happened. Is that what God is saying? No, that's not what he's saying. Saying what you did to me was wrong and you hurt me. And because of what you did to me, this happened and that happened and that happened. But in all of that, I'm grateful that I have this moment right now to release you from the pain. I don't need you to feel what I feel. I'm not, I don't want you to feel my hurt that you caused me. Now that's true forgiveness. I wish you well. And I wish that you never hurt anybody else like you hurt me. I'm making it personal, but I'm saying for every one of you all here today. God bless you, Therese. Good to see you. Sandy Clermy, God bless you. So when I when I see you, I'm, I'm no longer holding ill feelings. That takes time, y'all. That takes time. It takes a lot of time. Sometimes it takes longer than people are willing to allow you to have. Oh, I thought you forgave me. I forgave you. But my God, you know, I still got a fresh wound on my leg. <laughs> I'm saying I'm still on crutches. <laughs> you feel me? I'm still going through my healing process. God is still yet working out something inside of my soul to help me to, to be able to trust in this space again. And because you were there and you left a mark, you tattooed your name on the wall. Hmm? And now, and I just bought you and that's healed. That doesn't say that you now have a seat at the table. My God means that I release you from the judgment that you deserve and then I give you the blessings of the Father to go and to be well. I'm doing that partially for you but primarily for me. Primarily for me because I need to be able to keep my heart open. I need to be able to keep my relationship with the Father intact. I need to make sure that the enemy doesn't have again another entrance point break up my covering break up that external shell my soul needs to stay healed needs to stay well so that the thoughts that come up out of me my mind how i look at people when i look at the individual some people go through divorce and they're bitter they're bitter as heck they're so toxic they can't be happy for nobody that everything that they speak to you about is going to be caution like should you hair and down it's just like eesh, like you're you're still care you still smell of trauma. <laughs> I smell trauma. Right. I got to learn. I, can't. I smell bitter. <laughs> right. There's a whiff in here of unforgiveness. Right. And so everything that you counsel, pastors, apostles, prophets, teachers, mentors, life coaches, right. Who've now armed yourself with information, armed yourself and firing off rapid fire to help people. I got to get you healed and whole. It's really not because you, you are you're spewing your venom in a way that that can can curtail and to tailor make to bring them in right to your bitter world to make them strong it's hateful and revengeful and you don't you don't deserve that of course I don't deserve it 
Of course, I don't deserve it. But there's something about the spirit of the Lord now coming up out of me and cause me to walk in love and to peace. And, and I have to carry, I have to carry. And I have to allow, again, the word, the fruit of the spirit is the word, the abiding word inside my soul, inside my spirit to allow me to give off the aura, oh my God. the scent of glory, oh the scent of red redemption, the scent of healing, the scent of peace and wholeness. Oh, baby. Oh, it's such a beautiful thing. Uh -huh, honey, and that's that's what you now. You want to get vigilant. You need to get violent. You get violent at protecting your peace. He says, guard your soul, guard your heart with all diligence. Guard your heart so that you you got to protect what's on the inside. You got to stay covered. So you partner with God now to make sure that what's coming into your heart is not something that's contaminated. It's not something that will trigger you. Jesus, y'all got too many trigger points. But like, 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 uh, can somebody please get delivered for real? It's that like a landmine. Me. That triggered me. That triggered me. I'm like, well, good God, from Zion. And if anybody healed today, <laughs> can, can you hear something and be like, maybe I remember when? But oh my God, he brought me out. Can I? Can I get another perspective inside of here? Is that all the trigger? Don't listen to all the conversation. Y'all listen to all the time everybody else say, and then you make it part of your testimony. Get over it already. I'm trying to tell you. I mean, we're talking about something that happened 15 years ago, and you're living like it just happened yesterday because we're not allowing the Lord access to deal with those soul issues. So we need to at least uh, read a verse or two. Lilac, like, this is your fault. Somebody got to I mean, do yes, we do, we do. And while you're looking for that, you know, two things. This is what I'm hearing from the Lord. Like this is like a pimple being pushed out, right? It hurts, but once you get that pus out, right, your 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 face can start to heal, right? And then when you were speaking, you know, the question was asked, who have we given keys to that shouldn't have them? Right. <laughs> now we we've, we've ha we have the fissure, we have the brokenness in the shell, and then we try to close it up and we're not honest with ourselves and we're not real. And so what do we do? We put like a paste over the fissure. And when mm -hmm. something traumatic happens again, or when the trigger the trigger happens, right? So we're stepping on a landmine and we don't even know where they are. So our leg is blown off. Our arm is blown off because we're okay. stepping, stepping, stepping. So triggered, transported right back to when we were 10 years old, 12 years old, 20 years old, 30 right. years old. Thank you, Father. We have to push the pus out now. And that's what Pastor's doing. I'm saying very, saying very, very little. Because I'm like, go ahead. Um, this is a time of hearing that we push the pus out so we can be clean and ready to be filled in September. If we take this same stuff into September, we're, we're not even doing ourselves a, a, a service. We have to get ready for it, right? Yeah. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself in your process. Some some of us um, suffer from different levels of um, mental illness. Yeah. Doesn't mean that you're not saved. Whether there is one the spiritual aspect of the enemy comes to torment your mind, whether your body relives certain experiences by the sense and the smells, places, dates, times, right? Because you're, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to make it so basic because listen, this is necessary for us to receive healing. So many of us, my God, so many of us are so spiritual. We sit so broken in so many areas of our lives. Damaged. Because we don't know how to apply listen, the word to the psychology of the matter. The psychology of the word to heal you in your soul. And so you're speaking in tongues. And God's going to do it. Yes, continue to speak it. But, but you're also a soul. You're also a person. You have thoughts. You have feelings. You have experience. You have memories. And all of those make up who you are. And so a lot of us end up hating ourselves. We hate certain parts of ourselves. So we hide that part and we always push forward the mask. We push forward that place, right, that we want you all to accept. My God. We push forward the, the, the side that I feel that's always welcome. So I'm always going to smile even when I'm dying on the inside. I'm about to slip my wrist, but I'm smiling because I want you to like me so oh much. God. And I can't, I haven't yet learn how to become real said i love god i love i love the lord i really do 
I know I need to learn how to love him more and love him better. I love the Lord, but I get sad sometimes and I can't shake it. Sure. I love the Lord, but but I don't like that person. Mm-hmm. I don't like what they did. I don't want to do the set and I don't want nothing to do with them. My mind. Now, I don't want to stay in a place where I'm displeasing my father because I'm letting this thing sit inside of me. I may have a strong opinion about something that is uh, the strong opinion becomes a harsh judgment. And so I'm a person. You know, this is why I go back and say again these, about these titles. You're a man. You're a woman first. That's found salvation and grace and mercy. Okay. But get off the, get off with the high pinnacle. Get off of that cloud that you're on right here because this is why the church is ineffective. We're not doing well with dealing with the real issues. Jesus. The issues of the soul. And the Lord wants you to be able to understand you. You want to understand God. Understand you first. If you could know how you think and why you feel and why you behave the way you behave without hating yourself. Because we want to hate ourselves. We don't like ourselves. So you know what? You're not nice to your body. You know, I don't like the way I don't like the way that my nose look. And, oh gosh, I like I like the sat on my stomach, and I got rose here. And we're so condemning to this temple that's carrying us. We don't love us. And so you try to be intimate with somebody, but you're just like really covered because you hate you. What do you think you're giving off? Self hatred. Yeah. Self hatred. And after a while, when they start giving you back what you're projecting, why am mm-hmm. I? Here because you have not learned how to get yourself in the closet and allow this word of God to heal your soul. Your soul. So when I say I love me, oh, you love yourself too much. You, how can you do that? How can you love? If I don't love me, how can I, I listen? How, how can how can you love other people when you don't even love yourself? Can't you to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your strength, and then love love, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Oh, problem. No, we don't have any self-love. We're not teaching that. And then it's being taught, it's being taught so imbalanced that it's self, it's self-deification. That we deify ourselves. That we're gods above others and those little peons over there. They said, No, God loves me so much. And because his love floods my soul, that's why I be, I'm able to look at somebody who may be less than in your eyes and see the worth and their value inside of them. Somebody who may be physically irritating to me, but their purpose is screaming in my face or the treasure that's inside of them is shining so brightly that it dims it dims everything else that may be flawed and broken about them. Because when I see them, I see them through the eyes of God. I see them. I see them like Abba is looking over me and said, Jillian, you're covered. You think I'm perfect? I know I'm not. You think I get it right? I know I don't. But it doesn't stop him from still speaking his love over me and me understanding that nothing can separate me from that love. And when I see that, and when I said that, and when he confirms it in my spirit, it causes my heart to be open, to be able to reach out and to love other people, but not with my love or with the love that he gives me. That's what I was to do, was to do it. My God, it's 10.30, 10.30. Let's just read the prayer points because I want us to get ready. So this will be our prayer points for leading up. So if you're praying on the 5 a.m. prayer, okay, leading up to September, our prayers need to be around these points, okay? So we're not going to be hypercritical of others, nor are we going to be hypercritical of ourselves, always condemning ourselves, okay? We're going to ask the Lord to show us who we are, and we can only find the mirror must be the word of God. When we see him, then we see how undone we are. But then we run, to, we don't run away from him. We run to him because we know he's the only one that can fix us and heal us. So when Isaiah saw the Lord that he was high and lifted up and he realized that he was undone, the angel came and he brought, he brought the right, the coal to put on his lips to purify what's going to come up out of that mouth to touch him with the spirit, the spirit that will transform on the inside, right? So he didn't, he didn't hide from God. No, I, I realized that I was undone, but he says, now come boldly to my throne. Come, come, come again, because the, there's already a council that has already been gathered in your favor. There's a blood that has already testified that you belong to me. So come boldly to me. 
So when we see that we're undone, we're not hiding. No, we're running to God and says, God, I'm broken here. I got fidgets here. I thought this thing was healed. This thing keeps resurfacing. I'm bringing it before you. I'm not going to pretend for nobody. Listen, don't pretend for nobody when you're broken. Because I can't feel your pain. But identify pain has got a purpose. If you're feeling pain, but you want to keep numbing it, then you're never going to be truly healed. Mm -hmm. Why would you continue to inflict pain on pain? That's just going to bring you that self-hatred. And that's that's the enemy working in our minds against us. He can't do it unless he sway us in our thought process. So we need to we need new lenses to see ourselves through the eyes of God. Okay? We need new lenses to see ourselves through the eyes of God. I'm covered. So if I can allow him to take me up into the high places with him and give me the vision, what he sees. Lord, show me what you see. In your light, I'll see light. Allow that light of God's love and his word to permeate your soul so that you can have a God perspective. And a God perspective means God thinking, God thoughts, means God-like behaviors, God-like speech, God-like life. We need renewed hearts to have true compassion for others. This thing called Christianity is not about you exclusively. It's about the family. It's about the body of Christ. It's about having compassion and love for people. I can never get away from that because it's part of what I see. When I opened the scripture from the very beginning, when he said, let there be. It was all about getting everything ready because he wanted his children. He wanted his family. And God put you here to go get your brother, go get your sister. Go and to be, bring them their birth certificate and let them know you've been living a counterfeit life. which is a better life for you. So God has to give us a heart of compassion to, to meet the needs of people, to love them right where they are and to love them into the family and into the fold. Yeah. We need patience for ourselves and others as we all move through the process called life. We need patience for ourselves and for others as we all move through this process. It's a process called life. Stop being so hateful against yourself. So many of us are looking for answers of fix it books, help books, this prayer line, this prophecy, right? You need, you need to have two dips in the water. You need five bottles of oil. You need to do this. I'm like, just pause for a second. What's hurting you? What's hurting you? You're looking at the symptoms. You're not looking at the root cause. What's causing you to hurt? That's where we have to go. And that's going internally. Four, these are four keys. We need to practice gratefulness. Stephanie does a great job with her mindfulness, a sailor ministry. Mindfulness, right? The thought to stop, to ponder, and to think. The mind is always going to think. You can't stop from thinking. But you need to guide where it goes. Pastor BKW mentioned, and I believe it to be true. You'll hear me say it more and more because I just, as I'm, I'm mindful of myself and my thoughts, how you have to pull down those strongholds. You have to get those thoughts and bring them captive because they do, they're all over. They're like fireworks. And you almost have to harness the fireworks of your thought life. Like they shoot up in the sky and they're everywhere going in all kinds of direction. And then you have to bring it under subjection. Yeah. You got to contain that fire. You got to contain it because thoughts that are left unchecked becomes behavior patterns. God. Because what you think you will do, what you think you will say, what you say repeatedly, you believe. Mm -hmm. Believe you're convicted by what your convictions are as your true self. So that's a process that you have to continue to allow the word to help you to bring those thoughts under containment and allow them to be subjected to the will of the Father. So we need to practice gratefulness, appreciation for life, and its lessons is the wellspring of joy. The lessons I've learned. There's something that said, if I could have done it, I'll do it differently. But if I didn't go through it, I wouldn't know what I know now. Oh, man. I did not. I would have waited. I would have done this. I would have done. 
I would have not done that. I wouldn't have gone there. I wouldn't have taken that number. I probably would have took that number. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. What? Uh, <laughs> choices. Choices you've made in life. Lessons you've learned. Lessons you've learned. They'll make you better. Sometimes, you know what we're living. I, I said this to Stephanie before we started. Like, regret steals your present. Like regret is such a hurtful thing because when you live your life in regret, you miss all the blessings that you have right now. Yes. So regret is almost like driving forward, looking backwards. Like, no, like let it be what it, what it was. It was a lesson that you can learn from, even if it was a loss, it was a loss. Can you find a joy in it? Cause everything wasn't always bad. Right. The reason why you felt the loss because you really enjoyed it when you had it. It was precious in the moment, but when it when it left you, when you lost it, the lost opportunity, the lost relationship, there was joy that was there in the expectation. There's a joy in in in, in the, the the hope of a future. There's a joy even in your present, and you got so disappointed when what you actually saw was not aligning with what you was expecting or even with your belief system. I thought we had this. I thought I was gonna go here. I thought the promotion was mine. Like how did this end up to me, right? So all of these expectation, number one, gets dashed because life has a way of unveiling itself, showing you different facets and different avenue. And a lot of us are not prepared for it. So we need a new perspective on how we deal with, with letdowns, how we deal with disappointments, all through the word. It was good that I was afflicted. Mama. Selah. It was good that I was afflicted. It was good for me to be sick. It was good for me to have the experience that I had. Brought some things up out of me that I didn't know was there. Mama. Showed me some areas in my life that I need to pay attention to. Something that I need to like not, something I have to change like now, like now. Otherwise, I will continue to do what I'm doing. And before Pastor would have said this, or there was a time if Pastor was here, she would do this. So he gives you these moments, these situations, these complexities, lessons in life. And if you can choose to be grateful, God bless you, Shalaya. Good to see you. If you can choose, I mean, I choose to be grateful, Stephanie. I mean, I choose to because I understand that gratefulness is a weapon. Father, I'm grateful. Why you why why are you in the back of the line? Why you go? I'm grateful, honey, because today may just be the day where the first shall be last and the last shall be first. I'm hello. Grateful. I'm grateful, honey, because if the spot if the pot spills over, whoever's close to the stove will get burned. I'm grateful. You hear what I'm saying? I'm I'm great whatever avenue I'm on, because I'm I'm looking for the Father because He said if I'm seeking Him, I'm gonna find Him. Oh, I may be on a journey. I don't know exactly where I'm going, but I got expectation, and my hopes will not be made. He will not make me ashamed with my hopes. I trust in God, and He tells me, "You're covered." So gratefulness is something that we have to practice. And we have to practice to, to have appreciation in our lives because when you have gratefulness, it's a wellspring of joy. And the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is the strength. I remember hearing, I think I testified about this recently and I was out on the doctor and she found, uh, was doing a, a mammogram, whatever, uh, exam and uh, breast exam. And she was like, she found a lump and she was so startled. I just, I would have to like, lay hands on her to, to calm down. And Jesus said, what's wrong with you? You know, like what's wrong with you? I'm like, do you feel this? Do you feel this? I'm like, okay, all right. And I'm saying, you know, and I'm like, girl, I got so much purpose inside of me, honey. This, this right here is a test for you. This ain't a test for me. You know, what I'm because I'm like, because to be absent with the from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I was laying, I was laying on the table. I'm sorry. Now this is how your your pastor's mind work. Y'all pray for me. Because I was sitting, I'm like, well, you know. Well, if I died of cancer, this is me. I'm sorry. This is what I said. I didn't say, say the Lord rebuke you. I, didn't, I was just like, I'll probably get to see my nana before my mama does. <laughs> and I'll be in heaven with my grandmother. So I was like, I wasn't depressed. I just have all the kinds of thoughts because I'm just saying, 
I'm going to live until the Lord says it's time for me to go home. That's it. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to allow your doubt and your fear to become a kid. Oh, I, I see, <laughs> I'm going to keep my shell covered. Yeah. Honey. I'm not going to let your trauma become mine. And I'm mm -hmm. not going to let your anxiety become my anxiety. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let your worry cause me to start losing my head, losing sleep. Oh, no, honey. I just... I just did all this crochet by myself. Yes, I got to hold on to every last follicle. You strand. You hear what I'm saying? I'm like, so I can't do that because what does worrying do to me? It just takes away my sleep. And the word of God said he gives his beloved sweet sleep. So if he's giving me sleep and I'm causing worry, and he said, don't be anxious for nothing but everything with prayer by Thanksgiving, let your request be made known. Okay, so now I'm going to be contradicting what he words, his word said. So that means I'm going to say, well, you are not, you, you ain't truthful enough to keep your word. You're like not powerful enough. You know what I'm saying? So I got I to gotta really worry because I don't know. And then he's going to say, Jolene, you're covered. So you got to live knowing that you're covered. That no matter what you're dealing with, I'm covered. Come on, we got to get a t-shirt that says, I'm covered. Seekers for life. Covered. Covered. I'm already thinking of a song like, we're covered. Like, covered. Right. You hear know what I'm saying? I think about insurance policy. I'm gonna worry about that. Hundred percent covered. I'm mm -hmm. gonna co pays on that. The thing I do is obey the obey what he says. Covered, huh? You get red ended. Not worried. Covered, huh? You're the cause of this crash. Not worried. I'm covered. You're covered. Covered. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because God is watching over his word to perform it. He's watching over his word. He's looking for somebody to show himself strong and mighty too. And it might as well be you. I'm covered. Oh my gosh. I'm covered. So hurt. Daddy hurt. Abuse hurt. Trauma passed. Okay. But I'm covered. It was good for me to be afflicted. It was good for me to go through those things. That's why I'm standing here right now with the joy of the Lord moving in and through my soul, blessing me as I sit here in this kitchen. Glory to God. Thank you, God, for my voice coming back because I got something I got to say. Glory, glory, glory. I'm fully convinced that the power of God is working right now on my behalf working right now on your behalf the lord is looking for an avenue to come in here and fix what's been broken inside of you because he gave you treasure and the enemy has tried to use trauma to interfere and interrupt what the treasure god has put in you but god says cease and desist Jeez. now he comes in and what has been broken he will fix the fissure but he'll also heal the trauma and he'll heal the fracture so when we pray we're going to pray according to scripture I want y'all to read the doors. Read the doors. I got keys, but you if you got a key, ain't got no door to insert it in, you ain't getting entrance. You ain't getting entrance. So I want you to go to the page, look at the scripture, look at the doors. We're going to pray for our eyes to be open according to Matthew 6 and 22. I'm just going to read the scripture because at our 5 a.m. prayer, this is what we're praying. I don't want to hear nothing crazy. Y'all hear me? I don't need to hear nothing all the way out with you and you. We're praying these scriptures. This is the key. Here's the door. Let's get some access. Ephesians 1, 17 through 18. We are going to pray for our, our, our hearts to receive the word that brings transformation. Unless the word abides in you, there's no fruit that's going to remain. But if you abide in him, and he abide in you. Then, then when you go through the test, what he's going to see is that he, you have the character of God, the nature of God, the spirit of God that, pro, the, that produces the fruit of the spirit. And that fruit is what he's looking for. Remember, we did that, the branch life. Come on, he comes down, he prunes us. He prunes us. He cut us down to the stuff. Why? Because he knows what's inside of you. He knows what's beneath the ground. He knows what's at the root. He knows what's inside of you. So he's going to allow you to go through some things. So, so we pray for our hearts to receive the word that brings transformation. First Peter 3 and 8. Lamentation 3, 22 to 23. This is on our page. Colossians 3 and 12. The, second, the third door. We pray for maturity to produce the fruit of the spirit. It's called a process. You don't put no cherry seed in the ground and tomorrow you go outside. This ain't Jack and the Beanstalk. Ain't no magic seeds up inside of here. Okay? You're living on earth. You're in God redeemed time. When God redeems time. There is an overlay of eternity within the earth realm. When you find miracles happening, you have to understand that somebody has created a portal from eternity into time. That happens in prayer. 
You hear what I'm saying? When you have miracles, where you have the supernatural manifesting within our time and our space, you understand that what's happening in here is that there is a fissure between a brokenness between time and eternity. Some fissures are good. Some fissures are good. But God begins to manifest the super upon the natural, where we pray the kingdom manifests within the earth realm. Those things happen. So what are we praying for? Maturity to produce fruit of the spirit. It's a process and it takes time for fruit to come forth. So there's pruning that has to happen. There's a binding, there's a saying, there's a proclamation that must come forth out of your mouth. The word of God that's going to make, that's going to be evident through time. Be patient with yourself. Patient with the process. Mm -hmm. Patient with the process mm -hmm. with yourself and for others. And finally, we pray for the Spirit's flow to flood our souls. Now here, when I, when I wrote this, I saw, as Ezekiel saw, from up under the throne, up under the altar. My God, there's an altar. There's always, a, I mean, you ought to see that's the courtroom now. Up out under the altar, there is the glass we see. There's the Spirit, the flood of the Spirit that goes forward, that manifests from the kingdom of heaven right into my God, the kingdom of God, right through us into the kingdom of heaven, right through the earth realm, through you, his vessels. So that the flood that comes through your soul, you got to see, it's like, I always think about the levees being broken. What happened to New Orleans? That was bad. But that's a good thing that happens to your soul. Sometimes you got blockages, you got levees that continues to block the flow of heaven to come. And God comes as like a mighty rushing force of that water that floods your soul and it moves away all the blockages that come from the surrendered life. Like hands lifted. Father, anything in me that's stopping you from flowing through me, burst it out, break it down, just annihilate it. Let the floodgates of heaven move anything that's standing in my way that keeps me from living the life that glorifies you in this world. So we pray that God, the spirit flood, the spirit will flow to flood our souls. We surrender our will. See us in the souls, in the soul. So the heart, your mind, your soul, heart, your mind, your soul, your passions, your desires, your intellect, your ability to comprehend and to understand, and your soul, your is, it's your identity, your core beliefs happen in your soul, the balance for the soul of man, because that's that's the that's the organ of choice. I make my decisions there based on my experience, based on my desires, based on what I want, based on what I feel. The soul is the battleground. And so we have to pray that the spirit of the Lord will come and now take over, take over the organ of the soul, that the spirit of God, will, once you are renewed in your spirit, then that spirit is able to take the instructions from, from the spirit of God. And then your soul is now working in tandem with the word. And so then there's a washing of your mind, a washing of your thoughts, a washing of your choices. Uh, something is happening on the inside. It's miraculous. Mm -hmm. it's, it's miraculous with the power of God. Because to transform your thinking and your mind and what I wanted to do, I can't do it because I'm now restrained by the love of God. My God. Because love my heart God. says, because he loves me. I love him. And because I love him, I got to be honest. I got to be faithful to my God. So I know what my body may want. I know what my desires may be, but I'm now choosing within my soul to surrender my will to him. Mm, glory to God. So we surrender our wills and let him take full control. So then we pray these scriptures, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. We pray Colossians 3 and 15 again. We pray 2 Corinthians 2 and 14. And we pray Psalms 103, 2 through 5. And so I want to get us ready for our 30 day seat coming up, 30 day seat coming up, starting on next Thursday, we'll be going for 30 days on our fasting protocol. We're meeting every night um, on the seek at 9 PM. God is going to do what only God can do. God's going to do it, but I guarantee you, you need to be present. So your name can be called because if you're not present, your name is called. You can't answer. If you're not present when your name is called, you won't receive what's been what's been already assigned to you. Mm -hmm. Be present. 
show up, show up to consecration. You don't have to be a member of the Sikh. We have supporters of the Sikh. We have affiliates of the Sikh. The members were expected to fast and pray, okay? But everybody, you know the Sikh protocol. We're going to fast from at least one meal a day, and that's one at least one six-hour period of the day. We're going to not have anything to eat. We're going to pray for an aggregate of one hour, <clears throat> an aggregate of one hour. So whether you say, I'm going to give 15 minutes or I'm going to spend half an hour praying in the evening time. I'm going to spend 15 minutes praying before the Lord, before I get up early. I'm going to spend 15 minutes walking and praying on my lunch break. Okay. We're going to also study the word. So when we're reading the word of God and in that one hour time frame, we're reading, we're meditating, we're writing, we're reflecting. So prayer time, one hour, Reading, meditating, writing, reflecting, another hour, right? is a lot. That's just two hours out of the day, saints. It's two hours out of the day. We're going to share. We're going to invite two people to join us on the journey because our encounter as a seeker is to have a presence and an audience with the Father. It's to have the Christ encounter, the Holy Spirit encounter. And when you have an encounter with Christ, everything changes. Enjoy. Ask them to come. Bring the requests getting our journals and we're writing. We may have questions and you'll be able to check off your answers because God's going to answer every question. There will be solutions. There'll be prayer requests that you're going to write in your journal. You're going to be praying according to our guided scriptures, our prayer points. We're going to pray those prayer points to help us to all be on one accord, right? And so then we're going to share, we're going to share and testify about what God has done for us. That is our seek protocol. It will begin next Thursday, September Seek. Praise the Lord. Sister Lilac, I'm going to let you go ahead. Sister Riska, I love you so much. Been thinking about you, praying for you in New Orleans. Praise God. Pastor Sakar is on. Holy Soldiers. Dr. Sakar is on, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, praise the Lord. He received his doctorate and we're so grateful and we thank God for him. More work coming with India. More work is coming with India. Our uh, very own, our uh, very own Bishop William Walker. Um, is has uh, is going to be undertaking a lot of uh, our Indian missions. We're bringing him on as our apostle to India, um, and so the Lord is faithful. You don't have to do it. You just got to hear what He says, and in His time, and He makes things happen. It's the way He works. It's the way God does it with us, and a lot of things that have been born here on the seek have been born just like this in our conversations, in our prayer time, in our testimony time, in our after hours time, our, our earlier, we were on four or five hours just talking back and forth. This is the seek. This is who we are. We meet once. God bless you, Sister Dominique. God bless you. Lady Jones, good to see you tonight. Malachi, good to see you as well. Amen. Blessings to you all. Sister Denise Lewis, she's away. Pray for our seekers. Uh, Angela Elizabeth, I'm glad that you're on tonight, woman of God. You got to come sing for us. But Bishop, let you sing. Y'all come sing on the seat. Praise the Lord. Love you so much. We appreciate what God is doing in each and every one of you all. Well, we're going to end it here, you all. Um, I pray that this has been a blessing to you all. I won't leave without asking you all to sow a seed tonight. We don't always ask for a seed offering, but we do have things to do. Um, and when some of you all are faithful and giving your tithes, and a lot of you all won't give until your challenge or ask to give. So I'm going to ask you to give a special seed offering tonight to the seek. We want to be a blessing. Um, yes, we do have some pastor Sakar is asking for some specific things for India. Um, it's rain season coming. So they want umbrellas. We like to have our seek logo on those umbrellas um, as well as some medicine kits. They're asking for medicine kits. And so we need to, we've done that before. And so um, part of your giving tonight will be earmarked for India a lot. We do contribute and we do our best to contribute monthly um, a significant amount of resources and funds to go there. Um, we are looking at clinics, okay? Establishing a clinic and establishing a clinic near the church. People are always going to be sick. So that means we're looking to be able to do certain things there in India. Um, and the Lord, I love you too, Denise. I praise God for you. The Lord is going to bless. He's blessed our efforts so far. Um, you know, I'm, I just, I'm, I'm not, you have not because you ask not. So I'm asking that you give tonight whatever seed you want to give. Amen. Seek India. That's right. Amen. So, so into the, so into the ministry There's a lot. We're going to have a video that's going to be created shortly. Um, 
that will show you the work that's being done in India, all the things that Passes the Car has done, all the things that we're doing there that we're assisting to do. You all, um, the Seek the Unique Ministry. I'm grateful for God for all our coverings. Not say coverings because they're going to certain territories and certain people have certain access and certain there are certain gatekeepers in certain areas. There's certain people that have covering for certain things. So like if I go into you know, uh, Siberia, I'm going to definitely need a fur coat. Saying if I go into Africa, somebody just going to give me a nice skin thing called claw wrap and keep it going. If I go into India, I'm going to need a sari or something to fit into the culture, right? And so it is with your coverings. Certain coverings that we have are for certain things. We honor covering and we will never be our covering. But let me let you understand that Holy Father is our true covering. And there's no jealousy. There's no issue. There's no schism. I'm anti-schism in the body. And I get it if everybody don't understand. I owe no man nothing but love. But we are free to love God, love people, and to honor those that God has put us in covenant with. You know you can love more than one person at the same time. You know that? Now, listen, Stephanie's like, Pastor, where are you going with this? <laughs> make, 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 make it plain, Pastor. Like we're going to be having fix it. Fix it. You can love more than one person at one time, but you can't love people equally. You just can't. I'm going to have a discussion with divorcees. How many of them are still in love with their ex-husbands or their ex-wives? Bishop um, Jonathan Sanders wrote a book, LAPD, Life After a Painful Divorce. And he's going to be launching that book soon on face, um, Facebook as well. He's already had the book out, and but he will be doing a clubhouse. So it will be interesting conversation. But these are the things that we need to... Um, to have conversations about and about just relationships. You get involved, you're going through a divorce, you've been with a person for 15 years and you're divorced. Do you think that you're not intimate with that person? Most people will tell you that they're, they are because it's not the paper. Now, divorce is something that's so traumatic and so painful. Now, some people have been abused, but when, especially when your divorce have not been one that is contentious, people end up because it's almost like the covering is still there. The connection is still there. Your mind, the paper, the legality is over, but everything else is still yet joined. And you're going to have to learn how to undo that. Oh, they want to tell you that? I'll tell you that because divorce people know I'm telling the truth. They know I'm telling you the truth. And so there's so much that we need to talk about in the body. This is soul work. This is soul work. You can write your letter. You can tell people to forgive them. You can burn it. But then you got to go back and probably write the letter again. And again and again. And every time you need to have like a little burnout because it's like, I forgot to tell you this part, but this keeps coming up again. And I don't know why I don't forget. And you got to do that work until that thing closes, until you really receive healing. Healing in your soul, y'all. Come on, good Christian people. If we tell half the truth, we'd be better off for it. Stop lying to ourselves and lying to everybody else. So when people mess up because we give them this false, um, this false narrative, they're trying to live a life that they can't live. And they're living a lie because we made them think that it's okay. It's not okay to, to be hurting or to be depressed or, or to be lonely and acting like you're not. It's not okay. But you got to tell it. It's not okay to be in a marriage and not love your spouse and acting like you do. It's time to tell the truth. You can get it back. But you ain't getting back nothing that you lost if you ain't going to look, go look for it. If it's lost and you don't want to go look for it, then you're not. it's not going to be found. Okay? So there's some real... Oh, Bishop is on. Bishop, you hear me talk about your book? All right. I, 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 I'm talking about his book. He's on tonight. We're just talking about your book, LAPD. Life after a painful divorce. Get ready. Because it's going to be a great platform. It's going to be good information. And, and listen, we're not building a pulpit. I always say it now. You're not going to build a pulpit to the altar of your pain. Come on. Oh, my God, he hurt me. Oh, my God, can't you do this to me? Oh, my God, that was like 10 years ago. We're still living here. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> and you're so hateful. And, uh, and I hate men. I hate women. All the men are dogs. And, uh, you know, all women are skanks. And I'm like, you know, no, that was the situation. It didn't work out. And the truth is both people have responsibility and why 
the marriage failed. Well, the marriage didn't fail. You both failed each other and then the marriage was dissolved. And <laughs> the marriage is what you make it. So it's not the entity that takes the blame for what we do. Okay. So there, but there is life and there's a life and there's a healing, but there is a process and you need to be, I don't care who you are, man or woman of God, you need to go through your healing and make sure that you are truly healed so that you're not punishing your future spouse for the things that your ex spouse did. Or that your lens are not so skewed that you're looking for all the faults in that person that was in this person. So now they have to live a life based on the mirror that you're projecting on them. That's not right. You ain't ready. You ain't ready. All right. You have, everybody got faults. So you got to learn to live with them where they are. By the time you get together with somebody, it's almost like you can't take the Kool-Aid powder, Kool powder out of the water. It's already a mixture. So the minute that person meets you, why are we over here, Lilac? Why are we over here? The minute that person meets you and you're engaging with them, listen, life is changed because uh, the word, the word is spirit in its life. That's why you got to be careful who's talking to you. Be careful who's speaking to you. I do not engage in conversation with everybody. I can't afford it. One, because they're taking virtue, but they're giving me something. Oh, my big brother's on. I think he's my little brother, but oh, he's so powerful. Quentin Muffrey's on. Ah, I love you, man of God. I appreciate you. Y'all know he's straight up fire, okay? My ATM, my family's on. The doctors are on. I love you all. But there's a lot of conversation. Now, now we got deep. I got my brothers here that could talk about life after divorce. Men of God who's been through it who have gone through their healing process and some are still going through their healing process. Can we be honest? And we must be, we must be. And because I, 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 I just came, I, I, did, I, I absolutely refuse to. I will not live in the shadow of some other woman's issues. I'm not, no thank you. Her dress do not fit me. I don't even like that color. Uh, that's not my shoe size. I'm not going to be her. Well, she was approved. Well, I'm not going to be a, 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 a nah, nah. <laughs> Come on, we got to tell it like it is. I'm going to tell them, Stephanie. I'm going to tell them. Okay, so you want her, me swinging from the chandelier. I'm, that's, I'm not that limber. We're not doing that. Okay, because be, because she was approved. Now you got to you gotta flip this whole thing. Down. So everybody's got to be there. Oh, because she was wild. Right. You want me to live like I'm a nun, like that is not going to work or because he was whorish. Come on. Oh, prophet, you help me now because he was whorish. You don't want him to go nowhere and spend time with his friends because you have trust issues. Baby, we all need to be healed from the pulpit to the door. Get the usher to the flow. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm just saying, can I help? We got to help somebody. Oh my God. Prophet Dana Blue is on. Oh God. Listen, I, I love you, Prophetess. You don't bless my soul. Listen, we are on here tonight. We're on here tonight, but we got to tell the truth. We got to tell, if you, if you tell the truth, people be better off for it because then they see it and they think that, you know what? Oh, this perfect couple. Girl, I don't, I don't like him today. Oh, he's a man of God and he flawless. And Pastor's so he's so wonderful. Pastor's so great. No, Pastor got a bad attitude and he got a nasty mouth. No, 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 Pastor don't know how to honor his wife at home. But he's a man of God that'll preach heaven down. And you see stars and glory, right? And so, Pastor, look what I brought you. Pastor, look what I got you. And you all in the man of God's face now. Now, uh, of course, I, I'm not saying everybody does that. Love and support your pastor. But if your pastor got a wife, the two are one. So you, and you are lifting him on the pedestal and you're acting like she's a floor rag. You are out of order. Checks and balances. Okay. And if the pastor allows that, then he's out of order. Because how you allow, I was the first lady, so let me tell you. Because how you allow the women to handle your wife is how they will see her and treat her. But if she's your rib, protect her and honor her for real. Not just on the front, because uh, the discerners are in the room, and they can smell a they can smell a scratch. The bloodhounds are on the loose, and they can smell a scratch when it's there. So if we can honestly work at being truthful and loving and protecting our covenant and honoring one another, and not snapping and disrespecting your husband or your wife in public or in private, because you look at them and you see God. Ah, because when I look at you, I discern the body. Because although you may irritate me, I'm not going. I'm not going to dishonor my husband. 
I'm not going to come and get in a conversation about you, about what he ain't doing and what he's not. The minute you said yes, it became God's business. It became God's business. But we live our life in public, all the drama, all the selfies, all the pretenses, and y'all don't even sleep together in the last year. What kind of foolishness is that? Because you're, because porn is your partner. Uh, because you invoke that spirit into your house. So now nobody can satisfy anybody because there's another spirit in here. There's other people in the room and all of them are physically present. Their spirit is there. Ah, uh, Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm here to tell the truth. Don't shoot the messenger. You can, but your bullets won't work. Because we have nothing to lose. Everything to gain. I'm talking about the church. I'm not coming as slander. I'm saying if we're going to do this thing, we got to do this thing right. We got to do this thing right. And yes, there are men who are called to lead, but their wives are the pastors. And that wife will honor her husband because she is an alpha female. Can we talk about it? See stuff now. This is how it's going to be on the seek. This is what happened 30 days seek. Since the age of Even if that woman is your mama. Okay. We love and we honor your mama, but you didn't marry your mama. Okay. So we all have to honor mama. But just like I got to honor your mama, you got to honor mine. Hello. The same way my mom, oh, no, shit, you're not mad. And, and if and you get mad, why we run to mama? And every time we got an argument, why it's got to be about somebody else? Because you go back to your mind. And this is, those are the, the conversations that you need to have with your spouse because you got to fight for your oneness. You got to fight for that unity. You got to fight for this thing. You hear what I'm saying to you. Honor your spouse. I'm a pastor, so I could talk to pastors. No disrespect, I'm gonna tell you how to run your church. But but why is the pastor counseling all the women in the church and you have a wife? That's foolish. Why would you put yourself in that situation? What are you feeding inside of you? Why is she gonna sit outside? If she's sitting outside, that door is open. And ain't nothing in, listen. And if I'm, why am I counseling a man when my husband is here to counsel? And if I got a counsel, give you the word of the Lord, praise the Lord. My husband is here because he has to be able to hear. I got to protect my oneness and I got to protect my integrity. I got to protect my character. I got to protect myself and not trust my flesh because people find themselves in situations and relationships uh, that they were never supposed to be in because they left the door open. They moved away from their covering. And your spouse is supposed to be your spouse for, listen, accountability and covering. Because if you don't want to be married, don't marry. What if you're going to be married? I mean, at least try to do it right. Oh, I'm done. Prophetess, I'm done. I'm done tonight. Are you? <laughs> I need to stop talking. I thought this is your fault. Why are we doing all this? My voice is just coming back. I feel it my help. Talaya, I love you. I love coming you coming back much. at a good time. It's coming back at the right time. Because the people are pulling. So... <laughs> We've been here, y'all. We're getting ready to go on our 30 days of fasting in September. This is the Seek. This is our second anniversary. 30 days in September, we'll be fasting on our fasting protocol every day. We'll be meeting online every night at nine. There'll be different speakers. Our theme for this month, this coming Seek, our second year anniversary of September is I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm covered in the relationship that I have with my sisters and my brothers. I'm covered in my relationship that Abba has over me. He watches over me. I'm covered in my relationship that I have with my pastors and my apostles. I'm covered in my job by my team. My team. I can't do what they do. But because, but because I, I may be the, their, their, their boss. I hate the word boss. Because I may be the lead worker of that. Right? And they look to me for answers. When we get together as a team, when we work together in, in one unit, we all look good. I'm covered because they're working. They're covered because I got their back. Hmm? They're covered because I'll correct them in the right tone. And I won't embarrass them. And I won't degrade them. Because when I look at them, I see divinity. I discern the body even in the workplace. I'm covered. So I'm covered by God's covering. I'm covered by my relationships. I'm covered. And when I'm covered, I'm also accountable. Prophet Sherry Bean, it's good to see you. I love you so much. Matthew Long, look at us. We got y'all on here. My God, I appreciate you all coming on. I hope that you all have given tonight. I hope you all have shared with us um, in the word. I hope it has this been a blessing to you all. I love you too.
I appreciate you all. Have y'all been blessed? Have the word help anybody tonight? Lilac, I thank you for coming on and helping me. I love you and I appreciate you so much. I love y'all only know. know how this came to be. How it I came know. Be. We don't have a plan. I tell people, it's like, I will sit in our plan, but I got execution, executioners around me, execution strategists around me. And so when you know you pray and ask God to send you your destiny helpers, he will do it. Be open because sometimes they come and you don't recognize them. So that's why we pray for the doors of our eyes to be open. Sometimes somebody's going to come, but because again, those traumas from your past, right? You got your guards up and you got so many, you got so many checklists on here. Ain't nobody got time for all that. Like life is too short. You hear what I'm saying? We don't come through a whole pandemic. Baby, we living for today because tomorrow is not guaranteed. So ain't nobody got time to be going through no hoops. No, we're not. Okay. If they're going to, well, only the dogs and the dog shows go through hoops. Okay. That's, that's, they can do that. But for people who are really serious about their life and who wants to be, uh, just want to be in, in true covenant, true commitment, don't, don't stay around long too. Let me help some of my sisters and my brothers. That don't stay around long. And people trying to string you along and string you along. Oh, hell no. I'm, I'm sorry. No, absolutely not. You know, that's not God's will either. Okay. Love me enough to leave. Love yourself enough to live. Love them enough to leave and love yourself enough to live. Some of you all are not living. You're still waiting to live because you're waiting for somebody to give you permission to live your life. Everybody's not going to like you. But listen, don't let nobody have to make you, you got to do all these changes to become somebody else just to please them. I'm not your cup of tea, okay? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm chamomile and you need mint, okay? And today I'm not really minty. I'm just real calm and cool. Well, honey, maybe I'll be a fireball, but you don't do fireballs, Okay. You, know, you do ginger beer, whatever it's going to be. Okay. It's all right. Your preference may not be me and you may not be mine. Doesn't mean I don't love you. I do not respect you, but you have to know I, you can't waste your time. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I was going to hold you accountable for your treasure. And part of your treasure is your time. Hey, all right. I love you all. I love you all. Trisha, I'm so glad to see you all tonight. I appreciate you. When are you going to come cook for us? Okay. <laughs> Seriously, feel free to put that in the chat. A day <laughs> Time for you to come cook for the seek. Stop playing around, chef. She is the phenomenal phenom, the phenom ethic, epic gourmet chef, Patricia Shabali Nesbitt, my Jamaican sister. I appreciate, I appreciate you. Now listen here. Go ahead and pray uh, after the fast. I'm going to hold you to it, girl. Right, October first. Come October first. I don't care where we at. <laughs> we are going. Be, we're going to be meeting up for a party. We're going to have some things happening this week evening. I want to have a winter in white. Okay, I want to have a winter in white festival. Seek. We're going out. Y'all, y'all in the house too long. Let's go. All right. And so that's coming up because I saw it already. Get ready to get your winter fabulousness going on. All right. I want you to pray for us tonight. I love y'all. It's been so good coming back. <laughs> oh, we're so full. We're so full. This has just been so amazing. This is one of those, re everyone is rewatched, but this one, we have to digest it and take it in and truly just absorb. We thank you for your pour, Pastor. We love you so much. We thank you for God you. restoring your voice enough to Yay. share with us. Um, we really do. We love you so much. All right. Let us pray. Now thank that you. our bellies are full, thank and you, we have been truly, truly given oh, amazing Lord. food to eat, to fill our spirit. Oh, Father, we Lord. thank you. We thank you. honor you. Yes, we praise you and we love you for you are a great and merciful God. We thank, thank you for being our Lord. covering, Lord. our tarp, our tent, our refuge. Lord. Father, you are our fortress. You're, you, you shade us with your right hand. You are what protects us from the hand of the enemy. You even protect us from ourselves. So God, we stay under your covering. We dare not step foot outside of your cover. We stay where you are. Thank you, and we acknowledge that you are God and that we don't know the way. So you be our guide. We thank you for everyone who came on tonight and those who are watching at a later date. Father, we thank you for being their covering, oh God. Glorify. You would guide us in all truth and knowledge. Open our eyes to see what you see. Open our ears to hear what you hear. Open our mouths to speak what you speak. Father, we thank you that as we enter into this season of consecration, we do so being prepared. We have our hearts prepared, our minds prepared, our bodies prepared to consecrate ourselves to you, to complete the rest of the year and to enter into 2023 consecrated 
and whole. Father, we thank you for real, true, and authentic healing. Healing of the mind, healing of the body, healing of the soul. Mm -hmm. Father, patch up the holes Mm -hmm. that keep reopening, oh Father, and shore up the bleeding things. Father, we thank you that Mm -hmm. you're the dam that blocks up. We thank you that you're our protective shell. That we dare not let anything in there except what you ordained. Father, we thank you for hearts that are restored and repaired. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in us, through us, and with us. Thank you for being our covering. You are our covering. We thank you. We stay under your divine protection. And we pull others under your covering. Those we see being burned by the sun, being attacked Mm -hmm. by the fiery dots of the enemy, we pull them under your covering so they know you and who you are. We thank you for the gift of your son who covers our minds and our hearts with his peace. The peace that passes all understanding, we thank you that you're our shield, you're our guide. We thank you that your sword protects us and that we have nothing to fear. You're the mighty deliverer, and you're awesome. We thank you for our shepherd. We ask that you continue to heal her, continue to heal all the sick and infirm, Father. We thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha, that you are the God who heals. We honor you for what you have poured out tonight. May our hearts and minds be like sponges as we absorb your word and then live it out. We give you glory. We give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We love you all, Seekers. Malika, have a good night. Amen. Janice, continue to be well. Somebody has a birthday coming up this weekend. Okay, see (laughs) y'all. We're going to celebrate Sister Denisha Phoenix. Good to see you all. I appreciate all of you all. Have a great night. The peace of God be with you. Come on, y'all. Y'all are covered. Walk in love. Walk light. Okay, walk light. And if you find, let the Lord search your heart. If there's anything inside of that is that's that you feel like a tightness, uncomfortable, like don't bypass it, okay? Don't bump over it. Like, Lord, this this stinks right here. I don't like this. I don't like this feeling. I'm upset. Oh, I'm, I want to be upset. You know what I'm saying? But I know I can't stay here too long. But Father, I need you to move me out of here because I, you know what I'm saying? I, I need I need I need your your cues because sometimes we miss the cues, we miss the signal. And he's like, the lights turn green and you're still stuck on red. And he's like, I already told you to go on. And so you're gonna try to you're holding up traffic. You know what I'm saying? It's like you got to move forward. And so like, Lord, just be honest with the Lord where you are. He draws nigh to you when you're honest, when you're open. And it's okay. Yeah. Let's let deal with our attitude. Let's deal with all our issues, our problem. But we want to be free, y'all. Freedom looks good on you. Come on, you wear it well. You wear it well. Yeah. Man, we love you all. Have a good night. Remember, I'm covered. I'm covered. Mm-hmm. I think for our September seek month of fasting and seeking the Lord. We'll talk to y'all soon. Have a great night. Blessings.